Welcome back, Wisdom Seekers, to the Healer's Hut. Behold these hallowed halls of myth, mystery, and legend. Today we are going to talk about the other tools that you can use every day in your crystal usage. This is actually the other half of the wands video, however I am re-recording it to smooth it out and make it a little bit more cohesive. And we will be seeing an old friend today. It's this. So this is Terminated Quartz. You are probably familiar with this from, I believe, my grounding crystal video. Um, however, I'm not showing this to you to focus on the crystal itself. I want you to look at what it actually is considered. And this little stone is considered an occlusion. And that is where deposits of other stones end up in a quartz crystal. And you can find wands or points obelisks, double terminated, whatever, potentially whatever you're looking for in a stone like this. And what happens is whatever stone happens to be deposited within the quartz, in this case it's tourmaline, you can have agate, hematite, rose quartz, mica, um, oh god, I'm sure there are hundreds of different examples of things. What it's going to amplify is the power or the properties of the crystal within. So this makes this a very powerful grounding and protection stone. Whereas, as mentioned in the hematite video that I'll link here, that's another really powerful grounding stone. But if you are also trying to release something or work through something, the powers of the hematite are what will be amplified and it will help you to release and work through a lot of issues or whatever that you may find along the way. So that's what this is. Now, Another one, another example of something that you can find tools in or as a rough or polished crystal are layered crystals. And this is known as zebra onyx. With layered crystals, you have different deposits of different minerals. And each of these minerals has a different element, different properties to it. So in a stone like this, you can work through the different properties and the different elements, the different uses of each crystal, or collectively, it will have its own use because of all the different layers. So in this case, this zebra onyx is really good for electromagnetic uh, fields. It's good for, um, you know, that was part of the reason why I bought it. I believe it's a nut. It's also a really great protective stone. So it depends on where you get these from. The place I got these from is a little store out in Las Vegas. I got it off of Etsy. And all right, so I'm going to read this to you because I actually forgot what some of these properties are myself. So the yellow onyx is known for its ability to remove feelings of codependence and help one master their fate. White onyx, which is a little hard to see on a rough cut one, because uh, sometimes some of these layers are really thin bands. So white onyx is great for assisting in the removal of worry, nervousness, and helping to release, um, and helping one to realize there is no such thing as true separation. Black onyx is great for protection from EMFs and negativity. And overall, zebra onyx is a stone that helps with inner work. So this is protection and stress removal overall. That might have been why I bought it was the EMF protection and stress removal. Because I keep this by my work laptop. Um, but that, So that's a good thing to know when you work with layered crystals. You, again, you can find carvings in these, wands, polished stones... You might have to poke around and find exactly what you're looking for. I know you. I've seen hearts and pyramids in this as well. So if you need multiple things or you are aiming to kind of target multiple things at once, layered stones are really good for that. Now, you've heard me mention double terminated stones. These are fantastic for moving energy in multiple different directions. So this is double ter this is a double terminated ruby fusite. This is double terminated lapis. And this is a double terminated amethyst. Now 
just for reference, if you are someone that suffers from headaches and migraines, I would highly recommend looking into getting a double terminated lapis or a double terminated amethyst. The sooner you realize a headache is coming on, the better. They will work better. Or if you want to use these in conjunction with whatever medication you're taking, you just lie down. You have to lie down on your back. So if you're not a back sleeper or you find that very uncomfortable, I'm sorry, but it because what it is is you're going to want to balance this on your third eye. And what's beautiful about these stones, whether you use, however you end up using them, it moves energy in two different directions and it will help funnel off a lot of energy. Um, I will make a note here because this is actually a very important thing that I actually kind of forgot and my teacher reminded me and I'm going to remind all of you. So you have free will. So just like you have to ask your guides, whoever you work with, spirit, angel, animal, whomever, you have to ask them to interfere, to intervene, not interfere. <laughs> you need to ask them to intervene for help. You kind of have to do the same thing with your crystals. You need to give them a job. Using them on their own, they will completely and totally work just by their pure nature of being an earth element and being a naturally soothing um, just naturally soothing, they will work and they will do their thing. However, if you want them to work better or get better results or more targeted results, set an intention before you sit down to use whatever you're working with. So if you're putting something like this on your computer saying, please protect me from any electromagnetic fields, everyone, all the stress and negative energy people are sending at me, intentionally or unintentionally please block it from me um you know please funnel off any extra energy that I have because I really need to focus today it doesn't matter if you're working with anything in this video or any of the previous videos that I have you know set your intention and you will find that it will work so much better no matter what you're working with and fun fact they're really good at uh, the monster under the bed removal or like monster in the closet. So if you need to set an intention for, you know, protection against the monster under the bed for wee ones that might be having problems sleeping and it will work really well. If you want to add a little extra oomph to them, pair it with like a favorite, um, gar like a guardian angel pendant or saint angel, ascended master, god or goddess, whomever you work with, metal, statue, whatever, and you have a little extra oomph to go with it. So, multiple uses. <laughs> uh, so what's also really good about double terminated is that they are meant to balance, so they pull energy in two directions, however you choose to hold it, sideways or up and down. And it will absorb a massive amount of negative energy and bring you back into balance, which is part of what, you, which is really what you want. You want to be in a state of balance, grounding, calm. So what's also really nice about these is that because they're double terminated, it acts as a bridge. In some ways, it can be a bridge between blocked chakras, so it can help get rid of that negative energy and then re heal the connection between two points so that energy starts moving again. It can help break old patterns. It A lot of it, will, I feel like, is going to depend on the type of crystal that you use. So I did mean to mention this with the occlusions, but I'm going to mention it here because I've brought it up. So this is Ruby Fusite. This is Ruby Fusite. So Fusite, this is an example of a stone or a mineral, which another mineral has set it, has set it. This is an example of a mineral in which another one has settled. So in a case like this, you're actually working with the properties of both stones. It's kind of like a layered crystal in some effects, but different because it's more spotty. Like these little pink bits are where the ruby is. The, the fusite is actually a type of mica. I feel like mica 
oftentimes blends with other um, minerals and whatnot. Tried to do a quick and dirty search of how this would be classified, but it was a little too scientific, a little too geographic. Uh, geographic. Oh, dear. It was a little too geological. Like, it, it went more in depth than I was willing to go into. So, really, just overly simplified. You get properties of both crystals when you work with something like this. We're going to get into another fun one because, okay, so in the last video, you saw me refer to these as points, and that is essentially what they are. They are. They are pointed crystals. They are carved points. <laughs> However, in actually after doing research on this video, what I started to realize is that this shape is known as an obelisk. So this carved pat pattern almost not very pointy and tall with the facets. This is known as an obelisk. You know, like that thing in Legend of Zelda that you'd walk up to, you'd hit with your sword and then it would kind of bounce off and I think you'd either get the time or you'd get a location. That's an obelisk. Yes, I realize there are much better examples like that, like the Washington Monument. That's an obelisk. But Legend of Zelda is just a lot more fun. <laughs> so essentially what this will do this is going to do the same thing as your, let's see, I think I have some plain old quartz points, sorry, that was very loud. I was, so this is another example, I didn't realize I had this, finding all kinds, so this is what another, I think this is another double terminated, so this is what one looks like when it's natural. Um... Do I have a quartz point? I do. I do have a quartz point. Very good. So whether it's an actual point that's just naturally occurring or an obelisk, the obelisk looks very work. work. I'm trying to do this really quick and it's coming back to bite me because I can't talk right. So these are no, the obelisk is a little bit different because a point covers a really wide range of crystals. Whereas this is this is the carved version. And they are supposed to be beacons of protection and antenna to detect divine signals that are headed in our direction. So another thing is they will also funnel energy up and out. This is Amazonite, and Amazonite is another good one for electromagnetic fields as long with other things. Um, I put this around when I record and it's supposed to draw up and away. Draw the kind of like your pyramid. It's just another way of, you know, protection. It's another way of funneling energy. This is an, this is an add-on to the video. So this is a tourmaline point. This is, I guess you could also call this a tourmaline obelisk. So they come in large sizes. Now, they are supposedly carved. This one's really kind of more of a rough carve, as you can see. It's not highly polished. It's kind of matte. So you can find a lot of different things of what you're looking for. I just happen to really like this. I work a lot with black tourmaline for protection purposes. I also use this when I record. Um just for my own peace of mind. So it just focuses energy into a healing point. You could use this as a wand. You will find a lot of these pointed crystals can double as wands. Um, so it just depends on what use you have because it's a very kind of multifaceted, multi-use shape. It's really all it is. So points, as they stand, funnel energy, direct energy, point energy, however you want to say it, whether they are carved, whether they are natural, doesn't matter. But these can be used as wands. You can also use these more often than not in a grid pattern. So this is rainbow aura quartz. This is known as aqua aura quartz. I have also heard it referred to as angel aura quartz. And please hold because I will run and get the regular angel aura quartz. I don't know how well you're going to see this. This is clear aura quartz. This is also known as angel aura quartz. Angel aura quartz comes in a couple different colors. 
depends on how you know it. These three types of quartz are all bonded with a mineral that ever so subtly changes the composition and the use of the stone. So they're all really good to have on hand. This one is really will have the properties of regular quartz and it will amplify them. This is really good for angelic communication. Um, the blue one is really good for communication in general. It can, it can deepen spiritual communication and it's also protective against metaphysical or psychological attacks. It can bring peace during meditation and release negative energy and heal holes in the aura. The rainbow aura quartz... I hadn't intended on putting these in, so that's why I'm actually reading because I'm showing them. It dawned on me I'm showing them to you. I'm talking about them, but I'm not really telling you anything about them. I'm just using them as examples. So if you should want to go and look them up, at least you know what they're used for. Um, that's why, right? That's why I I purposely re-recorded this so as not to be reading quite so much. But it just so happens that. In my attempt to fix it, <laughs> I'm still giving you extra information, but at least you can use this now if you're drawn to the crystal and want to know why you're drawn to it. Now you know, because it has uses. Like, these all have varying uses. Granted, I bought this on a magpie moment. I'm like, that's just really pretty and shiny and I want it. That was kind of where that came from. No regrets, but that that's how I acquired this one. So this activates all the energy centers. So if you are an energy worker or you feel like you need to really balance out your chakra, this will be good for that. Clears a path for life to manifest multidimensionally. Brings vibrant energy and zest for life. Helps with dysfunctional relationships. Helps to release negative emotion. Helps to bring deep insight into all relationships at all levels and releases karmic ties that can hinder present relationships. So this is really good at healing relationships. I would also imagine if you do angel work, uh, if you reach out to Archangel Raziel, he, she is identified by the rainbow. So this actually might be a really good crystal to use if you are seeking to work with that specific archangel. All right. So anyway, back to the actual use for points. These are, they come in all shapes and sizes. They can double as wands. Um, the only thing you will not be able to use these for that you actually will need a carved one is if you need to funnel energy up because more often than not they don't have the flattest base for them to stand on. But if you're looking for something to use in a grid pattern, these are actually really great. I will however recommend that if you want to set up a grid, you will need between 8 to 10 of these minimum of two and that's so you can put one at the head and at the feet. I have another recording that I will show you so you can get an idea of what a grid pattern would look like using just quartz points. Traditionally when you do grids you have one maybe two quartz pieces surrounded by other crystals. However you can do one in all quartz should you feel the need to. Okay, so here we have an example of using two points to help funnel energy. So you have one at the head, at the crown, and what this does is this causes the energy to flow down to the feet and out through the feet. So this is where you need a minimum of at least two points. So, because you want, yeah, you can get one and just use it to funnel, but what this does is it's almost like completing an electrical circuit. You're just going to make sure that it flows all the way down. So you're just going to make sure that energy is moving and doesn't get stuck somewhere in the body. If there's a blockage, this will help to make sure everything just gets funneled out. Now, if for whatever reason you're a healer, you very rarely are you going to use simply quartz points for this, but you might need to supplement your grid with quartz. So 
this is what I'm gonna, so you might have a grid kind of set up like this. This, this is, again, this is gonna be kind of a rare occurrence. Um, because you're going to usually, you're going to be using different crystals in a grid. You might have one quartz crystal somewhere, but this is kind of going to be what it's going to look like. So you're going to have one at the head, the shoulders, the hips, the knees, the feet. So that's going to be kind of how it's going to look. And essentially what these points do is they may have been separated from a a larger base which is why you know they're not flat like they may have a flatness to them but a lot of times you'll notice they're pretty ragged at one end so or they're kind of like this is a really good example of like a natural double terminated one because it's really got the two points going for it um do 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 so if you point it away from the body, so like this, like let me use a colored one so you can see what I'm doing. It draws energy up off the top of the head and, and it's drawing energy away from the feet. So you can put them like this so that you're drawing energy from the crown out through the feet or you can put them in two different directions one pointing up, one pointing down, so that you're drawing the energy off in two directions. You might be doing that if you're trying to heal any holes in the aura. Um, or you can point them both up if you want to draw energy up from the feet out through the crown. So essentially what you're doing is you would do this if you need to heal something in the aura, help clear out the chakras and the meridians because something has blocked them and now you're trying to reestablish that flow. Um, that's usually what, why you would do that specific grid pattern because traditionally grid patterns are used for healing. Thank you for spending time with me today at the Healers Hub. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe for more. Let me know if you have any thoughts or questions, anything you'd like addressed. There is another video coming up concerning everyday crystal shapes that you can use. I will add on here that these are tools that you can use every day in your life. No training needed, unlike the ones where you did need some kind of just previous training in which you don't need any training for these or any of the other videos. That was really the only one where, you know, you did need some kind of formal understanding of energy work. The rest of these, as long as you set an intention, you will get the most out of your crystals. And even if you don't, just by working with them brings calming energy to you. So my friends, until we meet again, I wish you the very best. Take care. Goodbye.